A few days ago, Chinese Air Force official Weibo social media account said J-35A fighter jet has entered service with the Air Force. Around the same time, an actual J-35A airframe arrived at Zhuhai Airport for the imminent Zhuhai Air Show, and has since been shown in an air demo practice flight, as well as photographed extensively. Basically, China is ready to show off their latest stealth fighter to the world. But what is J-35A like? How does it compare to F-35, for example? And what will its service entry mean for the balance of power between US and China? J-35A is a mid-sized fifth-generation fighter jet. It's based on the naval J-35, which is yet to enter service, and both are based on the FC-31 project, a design originally planned for export a decade ago. So previously announced dimensions are likely similar for J-35 as well. All in all, it's basically the Chinese equivalent of the US F-35 a smaller, cheaper plane to accompany more expensive planes into the fight. Unlike the F-35's single powerful engine, it has two smaller engines. Otherwise, it's roughly in the same size and weight class, a less chunkier than the F-35 and a bit longer, probably carrying a bit less fuel. It's designed for somewhat greater top speed and can probably enjoy better supersonic acceleration due to its slim profile. But the same slim profile and its large weapon base means there is not as much space for fuel left, so the range is shorter compared to the F-35. An edge in speed and maneuverability, when not big, is largely irrelevant in today's warfare. Sensors, comms and weapons are much more decisive, and even range and loiter time often plays a big role in combat. The US needs more range, because many of its combat planes would be fairly far away from Taiwan, let alone the Chinese mainland in any possible war with China. While China designed its plane to carry less fuel, because it doesn't need as much range to fight the US over or close to Taiwan. But that also means J-35 might not have the range to threaten US bases in Japan or the southern Philippine Islands. Of course, almost nothing is known about J-35 sensors, but its nose is approximately the same size as F-35s, thus leading to a radar array of similar dimensions. Its power plant is just a little bit less powerful, thus potentially providing just a little less power to the radar. Overall technology level of the radar may not be that much in F-35's favor. China has been using AESA radars for years now in many of its fighter jets. Like the F-35, the Chinese plane features an infrared optical sensor in a stealthy enclosure under the nose, as well as several optical apertures around the plane for early warning sensors, similar in design and concept to the ones used by F-35. The biggest difference really comes from the fact that the F-35 has a single large engine which is positioned fairly close to the center of the mass of the plane, possibly due to the commonality with the F-35B vertical landing variant. The bomb base on the F-35 thus had to go around the engine and its large inlet. J-35 has its engines moved back and the bomb bays are positioned in front of the engines, with the intakes going over the bomb bay, similar to F-22's and J-20's design. The large flat underside that J-35 has was then used for wide long weapon bays. In fact, considering just how much smaller J-35A is compared with the J-20, it's fascinating that it has just as wide weapon base, and one's only a foot or so shorter. Given the slim profile, it's likely J-35A weapon bays aren't as deep as J-20s. Coupled with a somewhat shorter length, it's plausible J-35A is not designed to haul as large and heavy air-to-ground weapons as the J-20 could. But we're still talking about weapon base sized around Chinese air-to-air -air missiles. It looks like J-35 will be able to carry four PL-15 missiles, just like J-20. Those are long missiles larger than the US AMRAAM. There are rumors of a more compact missile coming from China, possibly similar in size to AMRAAM. If so, then J-35 might be able to carry six of those. J-35 lacks the side weapon base for shorter range weapons. So it's more similar to F-35 in that regard, than to F-22 or J-20. 
Basically, it would appear that the J35A is geared a bit more towards air-to-air -to -air combat when full stealth is required and no external weapons are allowed. That's compared to the US F-35, which is a jack-of-all-trades, equally focused on heavy ground strikes and air combat. That being said, those are still large bays and given that the Chinese PL-15 is bigger than AMRAAM, it's possible that J-35 can still carry a bit larger air-to-ground weapons than the F-22. But not as large as the F-35, which has purposefully designed deep bays for heavy bombs. Another clue to J-35A's expected role came from an interview with Wang Yongqing, an official from Shenyang aircraft manufacturer, which makes the J-35A. He compared the J-35A to a point guard player in basketball, adding that it must have a strong ability to score and clearly see the situation on the court. He added that the plane can also form a battlefield network used to achieve kills. Basically, that might mean the Chinese Air Force will use the J-35A as a support plane to the J-20 in those missions where J-20s are available. J-35As might be positioned a bit to the back, providing support to forward J-20s that would be a bit closer to the threat area. Of course, we are talking about maybe a few tens of miles of difference, given the expected combat range of missiles. J-35s would still be expected to shoot missiles from the back. In situations where J-20s are not available, J-35As would likely take point and go forward, supported by non-stealthy planes. Does that suggest the J-35A is less stealthy than the J-20? Not really. In another interview with the Shenyang official, it was disclosed that stealth requirements for J-35A were greater than for J-20 back in the day. That doesn't mean much without context, of course. J-20 was first delivered to the Air Force little over seven years ago. That could be enough time to come up with somewhat better radar absorbing materials and coating procedures. It doesn't mean anything in regard to the F-35, which may still be superior in stealth. But Chinese workmanship has been getting better and better quickly, and J-35s with their smooth surfaces and relative lack of protrusions may be approaching stealth levels that the US Air Force did not think China would approach so quickly. But what does all that mean for the US and its potential war with China? Right now, in the short term, it doesn't mean much. The first few initial J-35As may have been handed over to China's Air Force, but the plane still needs a couple of years to actually declare initial operational capability. At least two years are needed for training, tactics development and production of enough planes to form the first frontline squadron. But from then on, it's anyone's guess as to how quickly China will be adding more J-35A units. Right now, the J-20 is being made at close to 100 airframes per year more than the pace of F-35 deliveries of all three variants combined to the US military. When J-35 production is added, who knows where that balance will be? J-35A is the Air Force variant. J-35 without the A is the naval variant meant for carrier operations. As far as it's known, it has not yet reached naval aviation service, even though its development started earlier and spurred the entire project. Given the needs of Chinese naval aviation, it's not likely the naval variant will be made in large numbers annually. But even if total J-35 production reaches just half of that of J-20, basically taking over the current flanker production on one-to-one -one basis, China might be making close to 150 stealthy fighter jets per year. When might the US procurement match that is hard to say. Also, it seems plausible that the very reason J-35A was even pursued is because it's cheap enough to make sense, acting beside the big J-20. And if it does end up relatively cheap to buy and cheap to operate compared to J-20, who's to say that it won't be made in similar numbers per year as the J-20? So the long-term prospects for the US military may not be very rosy, unless the Pentagon gets a lot more funding quickly unless F-35 procurement increases drastically, and the sixth generation fighter project sees the light of the day sooner rather than later. That's again questionable given the delays and restarts in the Air Force's NGAD project, but that's another topic. For now, the US has a total numerical edge in planes. 
which locally over Taiwan may not materialize in actual numerical superiority. So the US must rely on keeping its technological superiority if it wants to keep its advantage over Chinese air power. Coupled with its allies in the Pacific, the US air power is still the top dog, but it needs more money and it can't afford to slip up if it wants to win a future war. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together. <laughs>